Okay, Peter, as a master instructor for IBSIA, you've got a lot of experience in the pro shop area. Uh, also had some of your own pro shops. I think it was a dozen, maybe 14 at one time, if I'm not <laughs> dozen, mistaken. Yeah, 14. Qu quite right. a while. Um, but overall, when you talk about pro shop information or when you're communicating to a player at any level, the environment around them is going to make a big difference on how they need to prepare. What do you see as far as environment affecting players today? Well, the interesting thing, it's always been that way, is when somebody gets a bowling ball, for example, or they're just starting out, the bowling ball is always the most important part. Then they get another ball, then maybe they'll get a pair of shoes, and accessories, perhaps. And then you go up the line, you know yourself as a player, all of a sudden those accessories become very, very important. And I don't think as an industry, maybe we're not doing the greatest job letting people know what they are and why and how they should be used. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions, for example, and people don't know what products work. You know, you have to think a couple things as well. It's all about confidence. So if I'm preparing for a night at league or even a great tournament player, you know 20 minutes before they start bowling, you know what you did. You're down there, you're making every ball fit the same that day. Why that day? because that environment changed. You know, when you walked in the door and there's maybe 30 people and now there's 100, that room changes. Exactly. And bowling's the only sport that I can think of where you have an environment because you're putting your hand in something. Okay, all, all the other objects, you know, baseball bat you hang on to, a golf club, so you could adjust your grip by manipulating your hand. Mm -hmm. You certainly can't do that when you're locked in a ball heavy object, it swings away from your body, it's completely unnatural to what we're used to. So some of the tools that people are going to be able to use, or I think you kind of phrased it a little earlier, the higher level player that you get to, or the higher you go, the accessories become a little bit more important, it's kind of what I got out of what you're saying there, because it sounds like, yeah, the equipment's good, you got your bowling balls, you got your shoes to start, but when you get into these accessories, they become more important as you become more experienced, because that environment's going to dictate who you need to be that day at the, in, the, in those shots. Um, what are some of the products that you see people using either incorrectly or that they need to use better? Well, rosin bags, uh, easy slide, hand conditioners, tape, we don't separate the two. The better players, you have to remember a couple of things happen. Things are moving much faster. They are also gripping much less. They are trusting because they're in time. They're walking you know, by this heavy object and they're letting things happen. So they are relying on how tight something is as well as the friction. The player who doesn't have those skills doesn't recognize what's going on and they have different issues. I see a lot of mistakes in the pro shop. Some of them are um, black tape, for example, used primarily in the back of the thumb hole to make this slick. Well, if you're making this slippery, what are you saying? You're actually making this so your thumb's trying to hang on. We actually need to do the opposite. We need to make that with a different type of tape and make it so the thumb doesn't have a reason to grab like this. I always like to ask, if there's an issue, why is there an issue? What's actually happening? Well, again, let's discuss what rosin is, okay? Um, and let's go back historically, okay? Bowling balls uh, didn't fit always the best back in, let's go, the 50s and the 60s. Let's even go in the 40s when there were two holes. They were round thumb and finger holes. You know, we didn't think about angles. But also, the lane conditions were much, much different. And you rolled the ball primarily, you know, really much, much slower than you do now. You also didn't have to play extreme angles as much, right? And in lacquer days, you played up the track. So you could hang on. It wasn't the best way to go, but you could. Since tape wasn't used very often, we use something called rosin. Now what rosin actually is, it's a very sticky material. It's like tree pitch, mm -hmm. okay? That is hardened and ground, okay? It's 90% of this material and 10% of a material called calcium carbide. Okay. And what that does is it breaks apart that pitch. Well, rosin, as it gets warm, what do you think happens, Stephen? It melts. So now you have something sticky that hangs onto your hand, okay? 
that's great if we're used to you know big round thumb holes but we have ball drillers now that drill oval holes we have you know expert tight you know expertly drilled equipment we don't need something like this and if we do well we do but i'll get back to when we do need this okay the next part we went to we said well the this is sticky i want something to lose so i'll use hand conditioner well, hand conditioner actually is not what you think it is. Completely different product than the rosin, right? Actually, not at all. Hand conditioner, what it actually is, is the same product as a rosin, just different percentages. Gotcha. Where this is 90-10, this is 70%, 30%. Not as sticky, but still sticky. So you can imagine if you're using this and you think you're trying to now release the ball. It's going to have the opposite effect. Right. Okay. So those are part of the things we run into. Now. These two, I grew up with these products and I remember using them when my hand would change in the environment I was in. It always dictated exactly what I needed to do and I was, I was pretty comfortable, pretty confident after starting to use them and getting comfortable with them. But then there were places where it really just got so sticky, I wanted something to get me out of the ball faster. What do I use then? Well, let's talk about how it got so sticky. Part of the things and what we're aiming for is we want a neutral environment. So meaning what you're looking for is that when you walk in the door, how your hand is when you start, that's how your hand needs to be in the 10th frame, third game, wherever, okay? You have to be conscious of what you're putting in your body, all these things that affect you. Now somebody, for example, that has uh, very, very, you know, they perspire quite a bit. They have got a bigger challenge because their hand changes a lot. My hands have a tendency to be very, very dry. I have a different challenge than that. Um, you would use, you know, so as you use a product, you know, I see players and they just grab the entire bag and do all this with it. Well, that's not a controlled environment. If we're sticking or we're hanging up in an area or we're losing something, we're not losing our entire thumb. That's not neutral as well. We're using, losing the ball in a specific area. You'll see because it'll be shinier. Sure. That's where you want to take a little bit of this material and apply a small amount. Directly it's that controlled. Area, yeah. That's part of the reason why things got sticky because you weren't very disciplined about sure. it. And you got to be disciplined. Now, easy slide, which we think is for our feet, mm -hmm. this is also for your hand. Actually, very seldom we use this for our feet. Right. This is an agent. And what, what are we trying to do now? We're trying to break up that tackiness. Moisture. That's what we use for this. Yeah. Combination of things as well. So for example, a puff ball. You know, these are things we use all the time. Well, a puffball has kind of a kitty litter. It's designed to absorb uh, moisture, but it also leaves the residue. So if you have this and you have very, very sticky hands and you sweat and you just use this alone and then you go to the bowling ball, the bowling ball is going to feel wrong. Sure. So plenty of places where a combination of using some of these products or just knowing specifically how much and being detailed enough to know where to use it are going to make somebody a better player and more in tune with, like you said, delivering the same shot from the first frame as they're going to give in the tenth frame of that last Right. Game. And you also have to be aware of what's happening. If your hand perspires a lot, you have to change tape a lot. The question you have to really ask yourself is, is the ball too tight or is it too sticky? Because they're two different things. Right. And in the, what I see in, in the pro shop business or in, in what people are doing, it's they have the wrong idea of what has to happen. Finger inserts in the ball. I know we're jumping on pro shop parts, but finger inserts are designed to do the work, not for you to lift with them. That's the whole point. If you lift hard with a finger insert, that means you're going to lock your thumb on the ball. So your idea is that the fingers are just fine and the thumb's too big. What do you do? You go to your pro shop, you make the thumb bigger, you've just made the problem worse. Okay, when the problem really was, you, you didn't let the, thing, the finger inserts do their work. Okay, the second part of this is cleanliness. You ever notice that when you get a good bowling ball, a new bowling ball out of the pro shop? Reacts great, doesn't it? Fits great, reacts great, usually pieces fit right. Yeah, yeah and why do you think that is? Everything's new. Everything's new to that customer and clean. It's not only new, but they're also relaxed. They don't know what this ball is going to do, so they just let it go. They just let it go. I, I'm not sure. Plus, you're right. The inserts are new and clean. The, thumbs, the whole, thumb hole is new and clean. That's why. So that's the environment you're trying to create. When we perspire, we don't just perspire with, you know, 
water. We also have oils and these things coming out of our hand. Well, all that is inside the ball. You've seen, mm -hmm. for example, when you have a piece of tape and you take it out. Oh. It's different colors, isn't it's been it? Disastrous, absolutely. So yeah. when should you change tape? When the color changes. It doesn't matter how many games, it could be two games. When the, chain, when the tape is different, that's when it's changed. Technology has given us a really good set of tools too. The interchangeable thumb series, they got the fingers to change too. There's plenty of pieces now that keep you from having to do that across your entire arsenal. You can change it inside of one or two inserts nowadays. A lot more convenient, a lot easier to do, a lot less overall maintenance and still gives you that consistent product. Right, and getting on the interchangeable thumbs, it's a great tool, no question. But the design was not to have several different thumbs so you don't do anything. The design was to make one ball feel exactly like the next ball, okay? You learning how to make your ball feel the same all the time, that's the greatest advantage. What happens if your thumb uh, insert falls out or, or you have to go to a different one? What do you do then if you don't have those tools? That's why the best players don't necessarily have a favorite thumb or a favorite ball. They can't afford to. They have to have the practices of knowing how to make every piece of equipment feel the same. Execution is really important at every level, especially at the highest level when you're talking about these tools. So not only great information, but great, great things to pass along to people that are maybe not so sure whether they should change their tape often or whether they should get their, their hand refit or how much of these pieces they should use. Quality information when it comes to actually executing those shots and being as a, a better player, a successful player, and it's, it's small maintenance nowadays. It doesn't take a lot to get this stuff done. It's just being detailed. If you want to see how important it is, take a very expensive bowling shoes. I've done this to a few players. It's kind of interesting. And all I've done is loosened the laces in one of the shoes, made them pretty loose. How do you think their next bowling shot was? Mm, probably not so good. Not so good because <laughs> all of their concentration, even though that shoe still fit and it stayed on their foot and everything was fine, but it was a different feel. All of their concentration went to that foot, yeah. not to their game, not what was going on. It was a total distraction. And that's what we're trying to stop. We're trying to make it so you can concentrate on the, the large parts, not the small distractions. And that's what these are. When your hand feels different, you're distracted and again we emphasize the tournament players but let's just take somebody coming off of work you just had a day at work you just grabbed something to eat real quick now you got a bowl league there's a lot of things going on you want to be in an environment where you know okay it's warmer today i have to do this you're in control so you can settle down talk to your pro shop professional take the tips that coach Peter here has been able to offer. Take these tools and start implementing them inside of your game because no doubt that you take this information, start moving forward with it, you're going to improve your confidence and your ability to go out and score really well. Right. Don't be afraid to ask your pro shop. That can be your best friend.